It's Rand on Real Estate with Greg Rand. Welcome to Rand on Real Estate. I'm your host, Greg Rand, on 77 WABC and WABCradio.com. I'm here with my co-host, Laura Smith. How are you? Great to be with you again, Thank you very much. Good to see you. Do I seem especially excited today? <laughs> well, you're always pretty pumped up, I have to say, but today you seem today especially I'm just, excited. I'm just jubilant today, and the reason is, and my wife gets tired of hearing me say this, is because I'm right again. Oh, I'm right my. again, well. and you're going to love it. You're going to hear. I've, I've been calling this thing right. I'm, lo- I'm wrong about so many things, but when it comes to real estate, I'm not. This is a show, as you know, Laura, about capitalism and entrepreneurship in America. Uh, during the Great Recession, we talk about real estate investing, building wealth in the real estate market. We talk about current events. So today we've got some interesting news coming out of Washington that I'm going to clue you into. Maybe you've heard about it, maybe you've not, but I'll tell you what it all means to you. We're going to take some calls, put this number down, give us a call, get online. I expect a lot of calls today. We've been promoting this show on Facebook all day, so I, <laughs> a lot of my friends are lining up. Uh, 800-848-WABC, that's 800-848-9222. And we're going to do a segment uh, that I'm going to call Stock Options versus Blue Chips in Real Estate. And the reason I called it that is that, you know, this show is kind of the beginning of a new genre. It's It's... Capitalist media, business media, but it's not the typical publicly traded business media. You know, we've got CNBC out there. We've got a lot of talk show hosts that are all stock jocks. They talk about the economy. They talk about what they call the markets. You know, the markets are the stock market, the bond market, the commodities markets, and all these other things, and uh, and the, the currency markets, whatever. Those aren't the world. That's not life. That's Wall Street, okay? I'm all about Main Street. Main Street's where real estate is. Main Street's where life happens. Main Street's where entrepreneurs go out there and struggle every day to try to make something out of nothing in the free world. And so this being a new genre of you know radio and media in general, uh, I still wanted to borrow some of the old Wall Street terminology. So okay. stock options versus blue chips is the idea of there are different kinds of real estate markets out there, just like there are different kinds of investments on Wall Street out there. And where some people migrate towards stock options, which are more volatile, okay, you can make more money quick, which attracts a lot of people, but of course, what goes along with that is more risk. And so we're going to talk to one of the biggest real estate brokers from Las Vegas. He represents stock options today, okay? Las Vegas is about as volatile of a real estate market as you can get. Some really interesting things going on out there. I spent half the week in Las Vegas, um, and it's really funny. You know, this is the first time I've come back from Vegas in years where I feel great. Meaning I didn't go out too late. I didn't, I didn't go, I didn't lose money. I didn't go partying too hard. I just, I knew I was coming in here. So I had to make sure I kept my voice in shape. And you're a good guy. I never, good boy. Uh huh. <laughs> I never fly back from Vegas feeling good, but that actually happened last night. Mm-hmm. But I'm a little bit weird today because I took the red eye back. So okay. if I seem strange, that's, that's part of the explanation. A little for loopy. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the blue chips, you know, what's a blue chip? A blue chip stock is IBM. A blue chip stock is GE, something that, you just know is going to be here 100 years from now. You know that it's stable. It's not necessarily going to light your fire in terms of a doubling or tripling of your money, but it's stable and consistent. And we have Charlotte North. I'm sorry, Charleston, South Carolina, um, representing the blue chips today. And we're going to go into detail with both. We're going to talk to somebody who knows what's happening in the investor market in both of those places. Uh, and I'm going to try to share with you, once we understand the strategies of what investors are trying to accomplish in those places, you may be thinking about investing in real estate. Maybe you're not. Maybe the show is going to cause you to. But you're not going to go flying all over the country to do it. So you want to say, okay, Greg, that's great, but I come from Connecticut. What does this mean to me? I'm going to try to show you how you can find the same kind of trend opportunities right near where you live and work or possibly where you go on vacation. Uh, But learn how to do what the professional investors do, which is they look at the big picture first. Their first objective is to try to make sure they find a place, some piece of dirt that has a better than typical upside potential that's going to appreciate faster or at least as fast as the market overall. And then once they find that, they look for some kind of ugly duckling, some diamond in the rough that everybody is overlooking, and, um, and then they make their plan starting there. So, um, let's see. Do we have our Vegas man on the road? Okay. Brian Kruger, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Greg. Okay, very good, man. Hey, good to talk to you. Thanks for being on the line. I know that Brian has got – you're coaching Little League today or something, right? <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, – it's a beautiful day in Vegas. So, for you East Coasters, uh, don't be too jealous, but it's 70 degrees, no clouds in the sky. And uh, we're, we're evaluating 8, 9, 10 
11 and 12 year olds today. <laughs> Very good. Well, that's, that's beautiful. The real estate business is all about uh, being part of the community. So you're illustrating that for us. Brian is the chief operating officer of Caldwell Banker Real Estate in Las Vegas, one of the biggest real estate companies in that entire part of the country. And Brian, you have an interesting background because when the boom was going on, you know, a little setup, Las Vegas is going through a really tough time right now, right? Yep. I mean, you guys did a lot of overdevelopment. You had high rises popping up all over the place, luxury condos on the strip, subdivisions of new homes out there in the suburbs of Vegas. And your property values, you know, back during the, the roaring 2000s, during the boom times, we'd open yep. the paper, we'd see that New York appreciated, you know, the suburbs of New York appreciated at 10%, and Vegas appreciated at 24%. So you guys were having a wild time out there, but then it had just as wild of a decline, right? Yeah, I mean, I got here in late 2004, and I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, I had a number of big development projects, condos mostly, and, I mean, we were selling 30 to 40 a month. Uh, traffic through the sites was the biggest problem we had was just managing the amount of traffic that was coming through the sites. And between 2004 and 2007, I think there was about 135,000 new homes built by the builders, and they couldn't keep up. With the demand and the zip code I moved into, 89131, uh, was the fastest growing zip code in the country um, at wow. the time for several years. And uh, ironically enough, it has been the, the highest uh, foreclosure zip code in the country the last couple years. And so, yeah, it was definitely um, boom times. Uh, there was the whole Manhattanization of Las Vegas concept, which I know you guys are familiar with there, but all sure. these condo buildings sprouted up. Um, with really no rhyme or reason when they were charging six, seven, eight hundred dollars a foot, and with median income in Las Vegas only about fifty thousand, uh, you can do the math pretty simply, and those people can't afford to live there. So it was all predicated on investors and um, and a lot of speculators, speculators, right? A lot of speculators. Yeah. It's important to distinct to, to make a distinction there because investors value investors. They buy and they hold. You know, they try to buy low, which is where we're going to now, and they try to hold until they can sell high. Speculators try to buy and then flip to some sucker who comes along and is willing to pay fifty thousand dollars more today for something that you bought yesterday cheaper. Um, so they. 135,000 units coming on the market and a very high percentage of them being bought by speculators means some big percentage of that 135,000 properties has to be bought and then resold again until somebody finally moves in. Um, and so if you can imagine this, um, if you look at a curve, a 10-year curve of what Las Vegas real estate prices have done, it looks like the Liberty Bell. It went like crazy yeah. <laughs> straight up during the early part of the decade, crested, and then dove back down again. And it's pretty much right where it started back in 2000, right? Yeah, well, we essentially wrote a, uh, put an analogous uh, point to it. We rode up a big chairlift up to the top of Mount Everest, and, uh, and we've been, we came down hard um, to the point where we've lost about overall about 60% of the values from peak to trough. Um, the good news is, is that the market has stabilized over the last year. I think last year we only had about 3% uh, price depreciation year over year. And so it's really started stabilizing. The affordability is unbelievable. We're the number one most uh, undervalued city in the entire country. And there's a number of reports um, that, that put that out, including uh, CNN Money, most recently just uh, about three weeks ago. And so that's really what's attracted so many of the traditional investors with the buy and hold strategy and we're working with a lot of uh, domestic groups um, international interest has really spiked um, in the past year and particularly just in the last three or four months because their currencies are so strong compared to the US dollar and there's potential bubble markets in some of these other foreign countries and they see the US overall which is undervalued by approximately three percent and Las Vegas is under 30 is 30 percent undervalued and that is creating a, a perfect buying storm um, for Las Vegas. Yes, that's interesting, is that we, we look for places where we see an overcorrection. I'm big about trying to understand the impact when you have a roller coaster ride and it goes up too fast and it comes down real hard like it has in Las Vegas, there's serious potential, particularly because of the total lack of confidence that people in this country have had in the economy over the last couple of years. That drives prices deeper. Then you have the artificial impact of the foreclosure crisis on top of that. Then you have the artificial impact of people who are walking away from mortgages that are underwater on. And what you're seeing, so you and I talked when I was out there a couple of days ago, and you're, yeah. you're seeing people with large sums of money. You mentioned the individual investors, the professional investors who are buying to hold, but you also see some significant Wall Street capital coming in, looking to take a position in a major market um, and buying large just whole swaths of, of units, right? 
Yeah, we've we, and that's really been the, the most positive thing that I'm really getting out into, not just to our agents, but out into the market. And we do a lot of uh, pushing of uh, information through our social media channels that we're uh, very uh, proud of the, the, the level we've gotten to on our social media push. But, you know, we've had some, some big projects. Um, one just recently was, was taken down. Um, they purchased the non-performing note. Um, it was over 200 units. Um, we've seen some good land transactions. Recently, in the fourth quarter, we saw some good um, size commercial transactions take place. So when I see those type of things, whether it's from a hedge fund um, or whether it's from private um, private equity, angel investors, et cetera, that to me signifies that they believe that we're pretty much near the bottom. And, you know, I don't think anybody ever believes they can really buy and time the bottom. But as long as they're pretty close to it, um, then they want to be able to buy up as much inventory right. as they can. Those are the wolves that you watch first, yeah. When those guys are making a move, that means that they see things that other people are going to start seeing shortly. So, listen, I know exactly. you've got some kids you've got to teach how to uh, throw curveballs out there. I hear them in the background. <laughs> Not at this age, Greg. Not at this age. <laughs> okay, good. Um, hey, how do they find you? How do people find you out in Las Vegas, Brian? What's your website address? Um, our website is uh, www.lasvegashomes.com. It's the most visited website for real estate in Las Vegas. And um, I can be reached personally at Brian, B R I A N, dot Kruger, K R U E G E R, at C as in Charlie, B as in Boy, Vegas dot com and uh, we'd be happy to talk to anybody if they had any questions about las vegas real estate what's happening and the you know the extraordinary opportunities that currently exist we believe there's probably going to be about an 18 to 24 month window where these opportunities are going to exist and then that 30 percent undervalued uh piece once we get through the distressed inventory uh which there still is some here that we're going to have to work through over the next two three four years but once we get through a major part of that that's when we're going to start to see that that capital appreciation start coming into play and the first piece is to get the prices back up to really where they should be versus how undervalued we are right now. Okay. Well, that's great stuff, man. Hey, thanks a lot for being on the show. I appreciate it. You gave us some great information. Okay. Have yourself a great day. This is Rand on Real Estate on 77 WABC. We're going to go now from after the break. We're going to come back and talk about a blue chip market in the Carolinas. Stay with us.